I'd like to call the meeting of the Narragansett Regional School District School Committee to order. And we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I think Mrs. Matson, you have our flag for us. Okay. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. <laughs> All right, well, good evening, everyone. Um, our meeting is being live streamed via the Zoom webinar feature, so the public does have the ability to watch our proceedings this evening. Um, we'll also put this out on our NRSD um, YouTube channel afterwards for viewing. So the first thing we'll start off with is the approval of meeting minutes for April 14th. I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. I have a motion. So moved. <clears throat> from Mrs. Trifolo. Do I have a second? Second. And I have a second from, was that Deb? Yep. Okay. Any questions or comments on the minutes? Seeing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Marks? I'll come back to you. Mrs. Matson? Yes. Mrs. Trifolo? Yes. Mrs. Robichaud? <clears throat> yes. Mrs. Kojal? Yes. Uh, Mr. Marks, I don't know if you're back yet. I'm here. Yeah, I may swap computers. Um, was this the meeting minutes, Margaret? Yes. Yep. Yes, I approve. Okay. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So those were approved unanimously. Um, I did want to just stop because I forgot to introduce everyone on the call. Let me do that first. Um, so for the school committee this evening, we have Mr. Marks. Mrs. Matson, Mrs. Trifolo, Mrs. Robichaud, Mrs. Kojal, and Mrs. Hughes. Mr. Mason is not on yet. I anticipate he will join us shortly. Mrs. Chartier will not be able to make this evening's meeting. We have our superintendent, Dr. Kazvamp, our assistant superintendent, Kate Kalise. We have our business manager, Emery Geister, our admin executive, admin assistant, Susan Varney. Um, we have Principal Young from the high school. Um, I know that we will have some members of the NDEA um, and potentially some students joining us. So I will note that when they do join in. Um, but in the meantime, we'll continue over, continue on with our agenda. We do have a lot of housekeeping things to take with the, this time of year. Um, next on the agenda was bills and payroll. We're passing over this. We will do it at the 519 meeting when all of the information will be presented. So that we're passing over. And the annual business tonight begins with the treasurer appointment and the contract. So I would entertain a motion to approve Victoria Chartier as district treasurer for fiscal year 22 under successful contract negotiations, which will be carried out by the superintendent. Once we have a motion, I'm gonna ask Dr. Kazaman to just speak um, and, uh, and confirm that he agrees with this. I should have done that first, so I apologize. So actually I'll have you do that first and then we'll go ahead with the motion. So I'll, I, yeah, so I, I certainly confirm and agree um, with the appointment. Um, this charity will be a, a great addition. So absolutely. Great. Okay. So with that being said, I would entertain a motion to appoint, uh, to approve Victoria Charter as the district treasurer for fiscal year 22, subject to a successful contract negotiation, which we carried out by the superintendent. Do I have a motion? So moved. I think that was Mrs. Kojal. And do I have a second? Second. second. And I have a second. I think that was Rayanne snuck in first. Any questions or comments <clears throat> on the uh, renewal of our treasurer appointment? Seeing none, we'll do roll call. Um, Mr. Marks, I don't know if you, you're not on video, are you there and can hear me? I am and yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Matson. Yes. Mrs. Trifolo. Yes. Mrs. Robichaud. Yes. Mrs. Kojal. Yes. Mrs. Uh, and myself, Mrs. Hughes says yes. So that was unanimous. So that has been approved. Our next appointment <clears throat> is the assistant treasurer. Um, we have someone who works in central office that also has the role of assistant treasurer. So we need to take care of the housekeeping to duly appoint her as the assistant treasurer for fiscal year 22. Um, and I'll throw it back to Dr. Kazavant again, just to confirm that uh, Kaylin Carpenter um, is the choice for the assistant treasurer once again? Um, she is, Madam Chair. Thank you. 
Um, so I would entertain a motion to appoint Kaylin Carpenter as the assistant treasurer for fiscal year 22. So I have, a, I have a motion by, I think that was Mrs. Robichaud. Do I have a second? Second. And I have a second by Mrs. Matson. <clears throat> Any questions or comments on this motion? Seeing none, we'll do roll call. Again, Mr. Marks um, is not on video, but he is here uh, on audio. So Mr. Marks, uh, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Matson? Yes. Mrs. Tripolo? Yes. Mrs. Robichaud? Yes. Um, Mrs. Kozel looks like she may have dropped off the call. Oh, let's see. Mrs. Kozel looks like she dropped off the call. So we'll make note of that for the minutes. I'm sure she'll join us back. So she will not be part of this vote. Um, since we still have enough to maintain the vote. And Mrs. Hughes votes yes, so that was unanimous. And if we could just make a note for the minutes that Mrs. Kozel was not on the call, she had dropped off and hopefully she'll join us again. We still have a quorum and we can still vote. So that was approved unanimously. The next uh, piece of housekeeping is our records access officer appointment. This is the lucky person who gets to deal with any requests for information um, drawn on the districts. And um, we have in the past appointed Ms. Barney as our uh, lucky person to be our records access officer appointment. So Dr. Kazvan, I'm just gonna go back to you. And if you wanna just confirm that she is still the best choice. She is the best choice for this job. I highly recommend and support the decision. Thank you, Dr. Kazvan. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, I would uh, entertain a motion to appoint Susan Varney as the records access officer for FY22 as per MGL 66 uh, section 6A. So if anyone, I would entertain a motion. So moved. I have a motion by Mrs. Matson. Do I have a second? Second. And I have a second by Mrs. Robichaud. Any questions or comments on that appointment? <laughs> Seeing none, we'll do roll call. Uh, Mr. Marks, again, he um, has no video, but he is connected via audio. How do you vote? Yes. Mrs. Matson? Yes. Mrs. Trifolo? Yes. Mrs. Robichaud? Yes. Mrs. Kozel? Again, she's dropped off the call, so she won't be part of this vote. And Mrs. Hughes says yes, so we do still have a quorum and, can, uh, and it was a unanimous vote. So that appointment uh, has been confirmed. Next up, we have the FY22 CAPS district representative. This is, uh, can be held by either a school committee person or the superintendent. Um, I believe for the past couple of years, Dr. Kazavant has served in the capacity as our representatives uh, on the CAPS board. Um, I will ask first if there's anyone on the school committee who so desires to take the position of the CAPS district representative. And I don't see anybody raising their hand. So I am going to then move forward to make a, uh, where I would entertain a motion to appoint Dr. Christopher Kazvam as the FY22 CAPS district representative. I would entertain that motion. So moved. And so moved. that was by Mrs. Trifolo. Do I have a second? Second. And I have a second from, I think it was Mrs. Matson. Um, any questions or comments on that? Seeing none, we'll do a roll call. Uh, again, Mr. Marks is not on video, but he is on audio. I'm working on it. Uh, yes, definitely yes. Okay, Mrs. Matson. Yes. Mrs. Trifolo. Yes. Mrs. Robichaud. Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes, so that was unanimous. So Dr. Kazavit, you are once again our CAPS district representative. Um, Thank you. <laughs> excuse me. Uh, <laughs> the same thing with the FY22 Keystone Educational Collaborative District Representative. Um, this is the new collaborative that we joined. Um, I believe it'll be effective July 1st. They require that either the superintendent or a school committee member be the representative. Uh, do I have any school committee members who are interested in being the representative? I don't see anybody raising their hand, so... Um, I will uh, may I entertain a motion then. And Mrs. Kozel has rejoined us. So that's good. That's Sorry okay. about that. No problem. Um, so I would entertain a motion that we appoint Dr. Christopher Kazavia as the FY22 Keystone Educational Collaborative District Representative. Do I have a motion? So moved. That was by Mr. Marks. Do I have a second? Second. Second. 
I have a second by Mrs. Kozil and I apologize, my phone's ringing. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, okay, any questions or comments on this appointment? Seeing none, we will do roll call. Mr. Marks, who again doesn't isn't on video, but is on audio. Oh, there he is. Yes. Okay. Mrs. Matson. Yes. Mrs. Trifolo. Yes. Mrs. Robichaud. Yes. Mrs. Kozel. Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So that is unanimous. So Dr. Kazvent, we thank you in advance for your willingness to serve in these two collaboratives. It's a very important role uh, being a member of the board because it, you do help in the decision-making process for the boards to support our kids. Um, if at any point in time there is a school committee member who would want to be involved, um, they can just mention it and uh, we'll see how we would go back about either getting them involved, switching the roles or whatever. But thank you, Dr. Kazavant. Okay, <clears throat> the next housekeeping detail is uh, the authorization to borrow in anticipation of funds for fiscal year 22. Um, we um, would authorize the district treasurer acting under the provisions of Mass General Law 71, Section 16G, as amended by Chapter 13, Section 4 of the Acts of 1972. And with the approval of the chairman of the district committee to borrow money from time to time in anticipation of revenue for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2021, and to issue a note or notes therefore payable within one year and to renew any note or notes as may be given for a period of less than one year in accordance with MGL chapter 44, section 17. So the motion we would need to, <coughs> to approve is I would entertain a motion to authorize the Narragansett Regional School District Treasurer acting under the provisions of Mass General Laws Chapter 71, Section 16G as amended by Chapter 13, Section 4 of the Acts of 1972 and with the approval of the Chairman of the District Committee uh, to borrow money from time to time in anticipation of revenue for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2021 and to issue a note or notes thereof payable within one year and to renew any notes or notes as may be given for a period of less than one year in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 17. So I would entertain that motion. So moved. I have a motion from Mrs. Trifolo. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Second by Mr. Marks. Any questions or comments on that motion? Seeing none, we will do roll call vote. Mr. Marks? Mr. Marks? Yeah, I'm sorry, what was it? The roll call vote for that motion? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Mrs. Matson. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm freezing. No problem. Mrs. Trifolo. Yes. Mrs. Robichaud. Yes. Mrs. Kozel. Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So we have voted unanimously to authorize and uh, to borrow in anticipation of the funds for FY22. And that's something the treasurer does for us. Um, next on the agenda, we're just carrying this for any budget transfer requests in FY21. We have none at this point, so we will uh, probably get to that in June, but we didn't want to lose it as a placeholder, so we'll skip over that. Um, next is the physician's contract addendum. Um, <clears throat> I would, this is the addendum that we have with Cornerstone Family Medicine. Um, and Dr. Kazavant, I'm just going to go to you uh, to, to find out your opinion on renewing this with them. Um, we, I have, um, and we did place a call and, um, I have, if, if they responded today, I don't know. So, um, I, I have, we've, we've not been notified that they don't. And usually they would, obviously they, they keep in pretty close contact with us. So, um, I, I guess my advice was, would be to, uh, put this forward they, as they have not, you know, let us know otherwise. Sure. And we're happy with the services that they've been yes. giving. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Oh, my God. They've been fantastic. Yes, absolutely. Okay, we'll, we'll do that. And if something does come up um, where they where you can't settle the, the addendum with them, then we will look elsewhere and take action at that point. So I would entertain a motion to sign the physician's contract addendum with Cornerstone Family Medicine as presented. So moved. I have a motion by Mrs. Robichaud. Do I have a second? Second. And then I have a second by Mr. Marks. Any questions or comments on that addendum? Seeing none, we'll do roll call. Mr. Marks? Yes. Mrs. Matson. 
Yeah. Mrs. Trifolo? Yes. Mrs. Robichaud? Yes. Mrs. Kojal? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So that was unanimous. <clears throat> so Dr. Kazavant, if, uh, you know, just let us know that we confirm it and then we can get that signed and, and, and put to bed. So thank you. Next up, we're going, uh, we have a review and appointment of our legal counsel for FY22. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Kazavant since he is in most close contact with our current uh, legal firm, Merrick O'Connell, for his thoughts and opinions on moving forward with appointing them again for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I strongly, um, strongly uh, support uh, to review, uh, to renew, pardon me, Miracle Connell. They've been, as you know, fantastic, um, very responsive, and uh, have done an excellent job for the district. So, okay. Thank you. So, I would uh, entertain a motion to continue using Miracle Connell Law Firm for FY22. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion by Mrs. Trifolo. Do I have a second? Second. And I have a second by Mrs. Matson. Any questions or comments um, on the appointment of Mirko O'Connell again? I just want to echo what Dr. Kazimant said. Um, you know, the limited interactions I've had uh, have been, uh, they've been spot on. So I'm, I'm fully supportive of us as a committee doing this. Um, if there's nothing else, we will do a roll call. Mr. Marks? Yes. Mrs. Matson. Yes. Mrs. Trifolo? Yes. Mrs. Robichaud? Yes. Mrs. Kojal? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So that was unanimous. <clears throat> Next up, we have a, the review and appointment of the auditing firm for FY22. We currently use Roselli Clark and Associates CPA. Again, I'll turn this over to Dr. Kazavant to uh, let us know his experience with them this year and to recommend or not whether we reappoint them. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think that um, I speak for Henry. Um, generally, we do most of the interaction with them, and uh, they've been fantastic. Again, very responsive, um, and uh, they've, again, they've uh, they've been fantastic partner. Great. Okay. Um, I would then entertain a motion to continue using Roselli Clark and Associates CPA as the district's auditing firm for FY22. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion by Mrs. Matson. Do I have a second? Second. And I have a second by Mr. Marks. Uh, any questions or comments? Seeing none, we will do a roll call vote. Mr. Marks? Yes. Mrs. Matson? Yes. Mrs. Trifolo? Yes. Mrs. Robichaud? Yes. Mrs. Kojal? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So that was unanimous that we will continue using Roselli Clark and Associates as our district's auditing firm for the next fiscal year. <coughs> The next topic we have is we need to appoint a new school committee member to approve payroll and accounts payable warrants. Um, the law was changed, I believe it was a year, 18 months ago, that regional, the regional school committee may designate any one of its members for the purpose of signing payroll war warrants and accounts payable warrants to allow for the release of checks, provided, however, that the member shall make available to the board at its next meeting a record of such actions. This provision shall not limit the responsibility of each member of the board in the event of the non-compliance with this section. So right now, Mrs. Kojal has graciously been coming in and signing warrants as they're prepared. Um, since Mrs. Kojal is not running again for her seat, we do need to have another school committee member uh, that's qualified to sign the warrants. And I say qualified because uh, anyone who has an employee, um, you know, immediate family shouldn't be signing them. So we're limited as to who can do this. Um, do I have anybody who would be willing to um, raise their hand and at least for the next couple of months volunteer to do this while we get our new com committee members on board and then maybe one of them might take it over? Okay, I don't see anyone. Um, so we're going to have to do this at our next meeting then. Um, so Mrs. Kojal, you're essentially on the board until May 17th. So we would ask if you could just whatever needs to be signed between now and then. And at our next meeting, someone has to step up to do this, or we have to um, create a three-person warrant subcommittee again, um, which usually it's a little more difficult for us to get those people together to sign. So please give some thought <clears throat> to your ability to do that and uh, maybe volunteer at our next meeting. Um, or if you uh, are interested, just reach out to me 
uh, in the interim and uh, we can figure out how to get that on the agenda with your name so that we can make that happen. So thank you. Okay. Next up, we have appearances. We don't have any appearances scheduled for tonight. Um, we'll have our regular meeting on the 19th. So if we do have any appearances, we could possibly put them in there. Um, we've moved curriculum and instruction up because uh, we have some good reports that uh, we want uh, Ms. Calise to present to the committee, which is our mid-year assessment update. And then after that, we're also gonna go on to the program of studies, uh, which is why Principal Young is here as well uh, with Ms. Calise to talk us through the changes that we're going to have. So I'll turn it over to, um, I'll start with Dr. Kazvant if you wanna do any lead in, um, who can then toss it over, uh, but we'll start with the mid-year assessment. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, obviously, even in a very difficult year, it's important to um, assess um, how our kids are doing. Um, and uh, it looked a little bit different this year. I'm sure Kate will go into that a little bit. But um, we, we think that we have um, a pretty solid base of, of data um, and something to um, uh, extrapolate on as we move forward. So truly, this is um, really uh, in the wheelhouse of Ms. Calise, and I, I certainly turn it over to her at this point. Kate, you're still muted. I'm going to share my screen, and I believe this um, document is in your um, packet. Oh, stop. There we go. You got that? All right, good. So um, this is this year's STAR data, as you are familiar with. We've been doing STAR now. I think this is our second year. Um, I'm going to start with just a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, in normal times, we would expect 80% or more of students to achieve grade level results with regular instruction. That's um, in our tiered system of support. That's the um, expectation, you know, universally in um, schools that with basic instruction in the classroom, 80% or more of students would achieve grade level results. And then in normal times, that you know, five to 20% of students who did not achieve grade level results would receive some additional intervention. That's what we do with our reading specialists and so forth. Um, that's uh, mostly what we spend our Title I title funds on is having an intervention program. This year, students in K-4 did receive intervention, but it was done remotely. Because of all the constraints of COVID, those five to 20% of students who were not achieving grade level results um, did have small group instruction to um, boost their skills, but that was done remotely. And we all know that that's not ideal, but you know, we were operating under constraints um, at various times with hybrid and kids in on, you know, some kids in Monday, Tuesday and so forth. And lastly, after April 5th, um, when we had to bring elementary students back a full five days. As you know, we repurposed some teachers and among them were the K to four intervention teachers and they were repurposed as classroom teachers. So that's just a little bit of context for the STAR data that you're gonna see. Um, I think we're in a really good place to be honest because um, there's a lot of talk about one of the reasons the state is um, so keen on continuing MCAS is because we need to see where our kids are and they want to use it as a um, kind of benchmarking so that we know how to help students. But we have this robust system of assessment that we use so that we know where our kids are and what we need to do to help them. So my slides are not advancing. There we go. So just a reminder that in our slides, you're going to see B-O-Y, and that means beginning of year. This is like typical um, abbreviations that we use with intervention. 
M-O-Y means middle of year, and you're not going to see it today, but you will see it later in the year. E-O-Y means end of year. So if you see something that says B-O-Y to M-O-Y, it means changes from beginning to middle of year. <clears throat> so this first slide is reading from beginning of year to middle of year of the percentage of students who are at or above benchmark in reading. I have this 80% line here so that you can kind of have a visual um, expectation of where we want our students to be. And you can see that in, in many cases we're approaching that level, but we're not where we want to be, but we would expect that given COVID considerations and so forth. Um, the blue bar is beginning of year, the purple bar is middle of year. I'm gonna show you a couple of slides before we draw any conclusions from this. Um, what you see here is that there are a lot of places where um, students did much better at middle of year. First grade, for example, is really to be commended. In some cases, they were level or slightly below at middle of year. This is um, also reading, but when I, I'm gonna go back if I can. When I looked at this, I thought, hmm, if we expect it to be 80%, of students who are reading at benchmark, how many kids were nearly at benchmark? Because, um, you know, there's a difference between kids who are just almost there, but they don't make it into that statistic and kids who are really far behind. So because we wondered about that, I looked at that um, idea and I added in students who are at above or nearly at benchmark. And this data looks much better, right? Um, if we account for those kids who are almost there, the, the data looks um, pretty good with most of our students um, at or approaching that 80% benchmark. This is reading again. So the observations that I would um, make about the reading data, and I included the at, above, or nearly slide on the left here, so you can see that as I scroll these points in. Um, first of all, the content gets harder at mid-year, right? So we're not taking, and this is something that, um, you know, is discussed in education. Um, we're not taking the, when we had, for example, DDMs for teachers, right? We're not taking the same test at beginning of year, middle of year. We're taking the, the appropriate content at beginning of year and then the appropriate content at middle of year. So that gets harder. So that's one piece. Um, another observation is that nine out of 13 grades had the same or more students reading at above or nearly at benchmark. So, um, you know, a nice majority of grades were, um, did show improvement. Grade two, as you can see from this chart, needs some focused attention and we have um, paid attention to that. They did show improvement, but of the bars, they're um, the furthest away from that 80% that we wanna see. 27% more students are reading at our benchmark in grade one. I put a little like applause here because that really is quite a jump for um, grade one from beginning of year to middle of year. And that's awesome because we wanna see those younger readers doing well. And 12 of 13 grades have about 60% or more students reading at above or nearly at grade level. So um, most of our students are above the 60% mark, but not above the 80% mark that we want to see them at. So that's the reading data. I'm going to talk about math data in a minute, but I want to give you an opportunity to ask questions if you have them. But I lost my, there we are, my Brady Bunch. <laughs> And I can't see um, the oh, the whole panel. So if someone mm -hmm. does have a comment, just um, uh, you can certainly just unmute yourself and go ahead and ask it. We'll pause for a minute in case someone does have a question. Yeah, I don't I don't see anybody with any questions at the moment. So if you want to move on to the math, and okay. then we'll great. 
I, I really think this is this is a good um, snapshot. I think given everything that we our teachers have faced this year and the um, disruption in instruction. I mean, we all know that remote instruction is um, you know our teachers are doing a great job, but it doesn't. Um, replaced in-person instruction. And so I think the, the data is pretty good, but it does um, help us see where we need to go. So in math, I'm gonna show you the same kind of um, pattern here. So this is beginning of year to middle of year, which are strictly at or above. And you can see that the math data looked a little bit better than the reading data did because more of the grade levels are closer to this 80% um, line that we're shooting for. But to be um, consistent, I did another slide with this at above or nearly kids who are close to benchmark um, at doing math at grade level. And you can see almost every grade is um, where we want them to be. So really good um, picture in math. So the observations about math, you know, again, the content gets harder at mid-year. That's the same um, as the, true for um, reading. 10 out of 13, in 10 out of 13 grades, the percentage of students who, whose math was at or above benchmark at middle of year increased. So that's great. You want to see grade levels increase um, from beginning to middle to end. 27% of students um, for 27% of students, their math is at or above bench, I'm sorry, 27% more students were at benchmark in grade one in math at mid-year as compared to um, beginning of year. So you notice that that's also the grade I called out in reading. So first grade is doing some, something right um, and, and having some really good results, which is terrific and they should be commended for that. Um, all grades have 60% or more students reading at above or nearly. So, um, you know, not, not at the 80%, but getting there and, and pretty close. So pretty good there. And many grades in the case of math are approaching that 80% mark. You can see there's, you know, they're just really um, reaching for that, that bar there. So I just wanted to mention some of the things we're doing to address um, what we're seeing in the data. First of all, our reading interventionist, who is an additional classroom teacher now since April 5th, was placed in grade two because we saw that the reading um, difficulties um, were in grade two. And we, you know, that's not pointing at um, any one cause for that. It doesn't mean that the teachers aren't doing a good job. They're, they're doing a great job. It could be that they have a particularly difficult group of kids. There could be lots of reasons for that, but putting our reading interventionists at that grade level gave them, you know, that extra expertise um, to help out in that area. We have um, planned an extended school year summer program specifically for reading because we know how important that is. We invited, I don't know off the top of my head, but I wanna say close to 100 students to participate in that program through Title I and uh, many more um, students are participating through um, the special ed department. And so far in Title I, which are, are non-special ed students, um, we have about 40 that have said, yes, they're gonna participate. It's gonna definitely be focused on reading intervention and then the extended school year program for students with disabilities through special ed is gonna be um, focused more generally on other areas as well. We're planning literacy instruction, professional development for elementary grades next year. That's something I talked with Mrs. Um, Soltizic about. So on our professional development days next year, we're really gonna look at our into reading program, which is new to us, but you know, in this year of um, turmoil, um, we're going to take another look at it next year and really look at what are the components of the literacy block and where can we help students in that classroom instruction. Um, as you know, 
We uh, extended the math textbook series down from high school to grade five. So if you reference back to that slide with math, you see that in middle school, the, the results were a little bit lower, but um, we're gonna have that consistent, um, really good quality uh, math series from grades five to high school. And we're gonna be looking at deepening our data practices for next year. That's gonna be really critical to use the great data that we have to really be targeting any areas of, um, that need remediation so that we can catch students up. That's pretty much the data. If you have any questions, please let me know. Does anyone on the committee have any, any questions? And I don't know, Kate, if you wanna take your presentation down so we can be sure. right here and then we can Perfect. see. Awesome, thank you. Um, are there any questions for Kate at this point on the data? I don't see any. I, I just wanted to um, ask a couple of questions because I, I think it was implied, but obviously next year we'll start the year off with the beginning of year assessment yeah. on all the students again, and then make adjustments as needed to address any deficiencies. Um, and I know you said that we extended an invitation out to about 100 students to participate. We've already heard back from 40 that they're going to. Yep. Correct. Um, ha, do we have a deadline for when the responses need to be back? And what could we do to incent the families to try and um, you know really get their kids there? Because this is so important. These are the, the grade levels that um, you know, especially with reading these these younger kids, if they don't have that basic foundation, we all know the issues that that travel with them. Um, sure. So I'm just curious what what you have have you know in mind for your plans to try and expand uh, to try and capture as many of those students as possible. Yeah. So um, good question. So um, the Title One survey uh, deadline for families is May 14th. At some point, we do need to cut it off, and we will do that um, the end of next week because there may be additional families that we could reach out to maybe who weren't in that most needy group if people aren't gonna take the um, advantage of it. Um, I've really worked closely with Mr. Holloway in the student services department. Um, we're coordinating our programs together. So when I said that I invited a about a hundred students, those were students who typically receive um, services through Title I because they have a reading deficit, but he has an additional whole group of people that he has invited and extended actually um, beyond what he would normally invite to an extended school year program for special ed to um, all students with um, an IEP. And so we really have reached, you know, kind of thrown a wide net for students who might need um, support. I think as far as incentives, you know, we've done everything we can. We planned the timing of it. It's three days a week, not five, because families need a balance of vacation. And, you know, it's primarily mornings when you get the best, you know, time with your kids and so forth. So um, I, I'm really excited about the program. I think it's going to be very helpful. As far as the data um, goes, I was discussing this with Dr. Cassidy today that we're going to use the end of year data because um, to inform the kinds of skill um, work that we do in the summer, because that's going to be so close to the beginning of the program. And then we're going to, for that group of kids who are in the summer program, we'll do another assessment with STAR to see what the growth was. Um, and of course, we will do a beginning of year next year, but we're not going to wait for the beginning of year results to start helping kids. We'll use the end of year results from this year to begin groups for intervention immediately, you know, in September, October, as we're getting that um, some that data from from that beginning of year. So, having STAR really helps us because we're able to really form those groups quickly, starting in the fall. That's great. That's a wonderful approach. Um, and uh, and I know that um, myself and everyone here has been concerned about you know, we're going to do MCAS because we've been told we have yeah. to. Um, but the delivery of the information back um, isn't maybe as time sensitive as we need. So having our own tools, um, which maybe we can also drill down to a little more customized level, um, certainly gives us a leg up for these kids. Um, yeah. the last I think this is, for, especially this year, 
our, the data systems we have in place are going to be better, give us better, better information than MCAS is. So my last question I have, and this will also tie into our FY22 budget is, you know, you spoke about we've needed to move some teachers around, take our interventionists, put them in classrooms. I just want, I'm going to ask the leading question because I already know the answer. <laughs> but as far as FY22, what are the plans looking like at this point from a budget perspective? Um, will we maintain the same configuration or will it be changing back so we have the interventionists playing the roles that they're supposed to? Yeah, so that's a great question, and I'm sure Dr. Kaplan or Anne Marie might want to weigh in, but we absolutely intend to have our interventionists back in intervention roles starting in the fall. Um, as you know, we added another teacher earlier this year. We had one teacher and some others um, in the program before, but now we have two teachers, which is terrific because they're really, um, you know, they have the expertise needed. Um, we're going to add some temporary roles through some grants. Um, so, but, but the people we have on board are definitely going to be back in their intervention role. Anyone else have any questions or comments? I know I kind of hogged the mic on that one. <laughs> All right, I, I don't see any questions or comments at this point. Um, we look forward to the end of year data once you have that all. Um, Put together that we can do another presentation sure look at it and uh and see what may may or may not have worked because this was certainly a challenging year um to try and i'm sure um any intervention is trying to deliver intervention strategies remotely it had to be very challenging um, very challenging yeah, some of the data looks like we were really successful in some areas so i'm sure that we've learned a lot um, yeah. We look forward to hearing back with the end of year data says, especially that our kids are back in school. So thank yeah. you. All right. Um, go so, ahead. so I, I think you want me to move on to the program of studies. Perfect. And um, I'm really going to turn this over to Mr. Young, who has really done um, the work on this with his team at the high school. Um, as you know, starting at the beginning of his um, acceptance of the role as principal of the high school, he really has. Um, looked at the program studies and made the school committee aware of some changes that had to be made earlier in the year and um, taken a critical eye to make sure that it represents really what we're doing at the high school. I think the most, you can correct me, um, Mr. Young, if, you, if I'm wrong here, but I think the most valuable document that the school committee could open while he talks is the one called Changes and Rationale. So you have three documents attached here. One is a clean copy of the program studies. So if for you know it happens that you agree with um, what's being presented to you and you vote in the affirmative, that would be kind of ready to go to post. Of course, we can make any changes that are suggested. The um, other one says school committee copy of program of studies with track changes. So if you want to look at the entire document with every single thing they changed, you could see that there. But the most clean, um, um, simplified version would be this changes and rationale document that I think Mr. Young is going to speak from. Sure. Thank you, Ms. Galise. Yeah, I, I think uh, Ms. Galise captured it perfectly. Um, the, the changes in rationale document really captures the substantive changes that we made. So the only thing you might notice if you were reading the clean copy at the end is we've had our counselors and we'll even do a final edit for format and things like that. We've had them take a last look to make sure, um, you know, non-substantive things, but if a course number needed to be changed, if, um, you know, the wording was a little bit unclear, you know, but, but the substantive things would be on the changes um, document and you could see the overall track changes. So that would be where to look. I'll give everyone a second to pull that up and I can speak a little bit broadly about um, the spirit of, of, of the work that we did. I just, um, there were a lot of, of changes. A lot of it was just wording and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. And there was a lot of, of data like that. And I know the committee, we've had, a, we've had an opportunity for a few days to take a look at it. Um, so if you wanna just focus on what the real substantive changes are. Right. Um, and this, otherwise, we could probably be here all night. You have done you have <laughs> done so much work. Um, yes. 
And uh, there is a lot of really great changes uh, that you're making. So if you want to, you know, focus on those, that would be, I think, great for the, unless anyone on the committee wants them to go line by line. I'm um, seeing a lot of shaking heads. So. Okay, <laughs> good for all of us. No, thank you, Miss Hughes. I, I I appreciate that, and and um, you know, we appreciate the support of the committee previously when we came to you. Um, and, um, you know, about needed changes and, and really the overall spirit of, of the work is we are trying in essence to make our program of studies more flexible for students. Um, with the absorption of eighth grade, and obviously we're a NEASC accredited school, we have a lot of opportunities to, without necessarily tracking students, have opportunities for eighth grade students to push into French, to push into art one. Um, and to get invested in areas that they could be really passionate about. So that would lead to electives later. Um, so what you will see in some of our electives is you will see electives that have been changed um, to really try to capture student interest. Um, you will see um, some of the things that you approved before are also in red in the rationale just because we wanted to update the program descriptions to really capture the true curricular practice in the classroom. Uh, you will see a, a major addition is students will take a global studies course if they don't take um, a course like an AP Euro. That's to stay in step with recent changes to history and social studies curricula. We really want students to not only be historians for United States history, but we want to have them have exposure to world history. Um, we're also offering a couple of key courses like AP Psychology, for example, that you had approved before we updated the description. And that will go live next year because we want students to challenge up um, into some of those courses. Um, the flexibility in some of the courses that are added here is also intended. We are beginning to explore very, very tentatively um, opportunities uh, for early college access um, and some of these things. And so we felt if we made our program of studies more flexible, that would mean more opportunities for, for more students. Um, so we're excited about that. Uh, we, uh, let me just um, touch on the, the other major additions. Um, we do offer some special education specific courses for students in a sub-separate environment. So we wanted to make sure that those courses were appropriately listed um, in our program of studies. Um, and we are trying to really capture the essence of our Project Lead the Way program. That is a major, major asset to students. Um, not only does it count as upper level coursework, um, uh, but it also, you know, we had as a district, as you know, that 100% um, access award. So Project Lead the Way um, is, is really something that um, we are expanding. And so you'll see the new course um, you'll see two new courses, Principles of Biomedical Science, which on the rationale document is page uh, 30. Um, and then you'll also see Computer Science Essentials. And these are two courses to get students that are clearly really interested in these courses um, engaged and give them kind of a pathway to really get contact um, with the program. I'll mention one other thing about business and then I'll pause for questions. W one of the departments that has undergone the most significant um, change is our business uh, and technology department. And really we wanted to make the courses that we offer a lot more relevant to students and relevant to 21st century and to really be responsive to feedback we've heard from students and parents. So we've run tentatively with your approval uh, earlier this year uh, we had an introduction to personal finance course for the eighth graders. That's been a hit. And so now we are expanding that to financial literacy. We really want, and this is feedback that we had gotten from this committee as well. We really want students graduating NRHS with some understanding of what they need to do moving forward. We've changed around our career preparation course um, and our business um, uh, course to, to really be a little bit more of an applications course. And the career preparation is actually now geared toward the younger students so that the younger students can begin to explore pathways and then get into the electives and the things that they want 
and then potentially explore um, whether it's dual enrollment through Mount Wachusett Community College or taking an AP or joining Project Lead the Way. We're trying to get them thinking about these things younger, uh, at, at younger um, ages. So uh, our business department, our courses um, have changed a little bit, um, but the requirements are still, are still all the same. So I would say that those are the, 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 the sort of the, the major changes if I were to distill them down. Um, anyone on the committee? Um, oh, I see Kate, do you wanna to add to that first and then I'll do questions. So go ahead. Thank you. I just wanna clarify one thing. The, um, one of the courses that Colby mentioned, the Principles of Biomedical Science is pending a grant that we wrote and haven't um, received notification of yet. So we're, we're hopeful that we will. Um, but that might be reliant on funding. <laughs> Great. Yeah, and thank I'm, you, Ms. Felice. And I'm just going to point out, too, that our program of studies, even though we have all the classes listed, we may not offer all of those in any one year if the interest isn't there right. um, or if the resources are limited. Um, so it's best, you know, in this case, let's get it on there. Um, so if the funding comes through, we're ready to roll with it. Um, Anyone on the committee have any questions at this point um, for Colby? Yes, Mrs. Kojal. A few years ago, Athol Savings offered to help out with a financial literacy piece to our curriculum. So I just want to say that maybe they would still be offering something to help you out when you start doing that program. You might want to reach out to them. Thank you very much. And they're still in touch with us regarding scholarships. So I, I you know, that, that relationship is still, is still a, a good one. So thank you, Ms. Kojal. I appreciate that. We will do that. Okay. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you. Anyone else have any specific questions for Mr. Young? I don't see anybody. I think at this point, the question I have for the committee is, have you had enough time with the information um, to really do a deep dive into, because there were a lot of changes. Um, and I want to make sure that the committee has enough time to digest all of the information so that we can ask informed questions. Um, so we can either motion to approve it today. We could, um, if we pushed it off, it would be at our next meeting on the 19th, which we could do. Um, but I'm going to put that out to the committee. Does anybody see a reason why we wouldn't want to look to approve this this evening? Do they feel, do you feel like you need more time to review? Mrs. Matson? I didn't have enough time to review it. I didn't realize it was uh, online and I, I did start reading it um, through, um, but if, if everyone else has read it, I'll take care of everyone else's word for it. <laughs> Appreciate that, Mrs. Matson. Um, is everybody, would everybody else be okay? We can take a motion and if someone's not comfortable approving it, you can either, um, well, there's only five of us left on. And so we would need um, all five affirmatives in order to pass this today. Um, but we certainly could um, make a motion and see how it, it flushes out. And as I said, we, we do have the opportunity to approve it. Um, in two weeks when we meet again. I, I just want to make sure everybody feels that they've been informed enough. Um, Mrs. Kojal? I think we should wait if Lori needs time to look at it. She's really good about doing some editing and stuff. So I suggest we wait. Right, that's, that's fine with me. Um, I think, Mr. Young, you should be okay with moving forward under the, you know, um, you know I know you're trying to get course selections and whatnot, mm -hmm. um, but we will push off the actual vote then until our meeting on the 19th. So Laura, you'll have a little extra time. Um, if we have questions, um, we can route them, should we route them to both you, Kate, and Colby together? Um, this way anyone can, you know, either of you can respond to any questions we may have. So does that sound good? Okay. Could I just mention one thing kind of at close? Thank you. Uh, so just because there are three documents, um, we you know, we've done our best to make sure every document, everything is reflected. Um, so if you're looking for sort of the ultimate copy to look at, as it's easiest to track the changes through either the rationale document or the, um, you know, or the track changes document, but that clean copy document, besides some formatting and things like that, that's, that's sort of 
the document that we're looking to move ahead with, just, just so that no one feels like we're changing it between, I just wanna be clear about that. Great, thank you for that clarification. Sure, thank you. Yep, so thank you for your presentation. I think you, you hit, the, you know, from what I reviewed, you hit the highlights of the changes. Um, and I always like to think of this program of studies as a document that as needs come up, we can certainly um, look at and review at any point um, like we did this past year when we needed to make some changes to fit some of the things that you um, you and your team had wanted to do. So, um, you know, we'll keep that in mind too moving forward. So um, we will go ahead and uh, move this to a vote for the meeting on the 19th and, uh, and we'll go any questions can be sent to uh, Ms. Gleason and, and Principal Young, and uh, and we'll vote on it, as I said, on the 19th. So thank you. Thank you all. Okay. <clears throat> Next up is public input. Um, I believe we do have a document for public input. Um, I don't know if Mrs. Varney, if you wanted to read that, um, or if Dr. Kazvan, how you wanted to handle this particular document, some good information. Ms. Barney, is that part of my, the, the, I'm looking through my packet, obviously, yes. at this point. Yep, it's in which, there. Which, okay, hold on. The single page. Oh, is this the, is this the uh, proposal? You the proposal, yeah. Okay, um, thank you. I, I, I will certainly read it, but it's gonna need some, it, it's gonna need some, um, some, some foundational, uh, work here information because reading this out of context would be I, i'm not sure how it would be um received so um ultimately what um the the quick story is that i met with the um, finance department uh last week and and really tried to um you know i really tried to strain out some of of, of what you know some of the letters that we have received in, in terms of the music department and and quite frankly, you know, I, uh, and as I've said before, uh, my concern um, was some of the things that were, were being written, for example, like the music program was cut. The music program was not cut. It was reduced certainly by, as one of the uh, documents said, 33%, which would have been one, um, one person from the Millen High School music program, leaving only one uh, music teacher, uh, and one at the high school and one at the middle school. So ultimately what it, it would have boiled down to is that um, the positioning question um, was, was really about 0.6, um, 0.5, 0.6 music. And the rest was, um, the rest of the time was utilized in, in terms of academic, um, you know, to, because we've had a lot of intervention needs, academic intervention needs. And that was, and that was certainly part of uh, what we were looking to do ultimately. So what I asked them to do was put her, is to explain and to talk this out and, and, and talk about the music program itself. And, but from the lens, quite frankly, of how this could support, um, uh, support the district or primarily the high school and middle school um, in, um, in, in terms of closing the gap, because that's, a, this is a bigger convert, a bigger piece is the ESSER three and what we need to do um, with those monies um, as directed. So long story short, um, no, it's, it's not gonna be short, I apologize. But in, in any event, what, what they have asked for is to keep that third music teacher uh, between the middle and high school. And what that position would do was to continue to grow, bolster the band, specifically the high school band and chorus um, programs, but doing so through the middle school, which is their feeder program, which we all, which we all understand and, and can appreciate. So going into what we know we need to do is we need to add academic unified arts at the middle school level in order so what my presentation was going to be later on coming up for either FY22 budget or um, COVID um, is that using the ESSER funds, we need to create these opportunities to within the unified arts cycle is to work with children whom are students 
who have deficit, especially in the area of language. So one of the identified areas was reading, um, reading language. So we were going to, one of the areas that we're going to post and add a um, reading unified arts person, okay, to uh, service kids who are below grade level as um, uh, Ms. Cleese had pointed out earlier. The other would be um, science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM, um, using our Project Lead the Way um, program because what we know is that there was, we've, we had some difficulties with students accessing a lot of that information during um, the times that we were remote. All said, what that allows us to do is to break down the number of kids that we have in these smaller groups as needed uh, or as defined by maybe need. So in other words, you can't have a reading class of 20 uh, or a, a class that's going to work on some, you know, some areas in reading with 25. It's just not, it's just not feasible and it's just not how you do intervention. We need to keep those, we need to keep those numbers small. So that means that those, the other 60, 70, 80 kids of that grade have to go other places. And so that in turn turned into looking into the music program as as presented by the fine arts department. And as you see uh, below here is that, and I will read it, the document outlines a proposed idea for keeping the split full-time 0.6 music teacher and 0.4 academic support teacher at the high school. In doing that, in short, it allows the, uh, allows the two music teachers to stay at the, uh, at the middle school. Um, before you, or you see that the, um, what the schedule is here. Um, they were able to do fifth grade band, fifth grade chorus, sixth grade band, seventh grade band. Okay, you, you see that. There's general music, um, which was part of our normal curriculum. And of course, um, contractually, they get a, a prep period and a common planning time. On the high school side of things, what you see is, um, is that in that point six, uh, when they're wearing their music hat, um, they'll be able to uh, utilize that time for band and chorus and offer an elective of appreciation of music or, or some type of other elective that uh, needs to happen. In high school, we students need at least one fine arts um, elective and that also helps um, that, um, you know, in that regard. Alton, so this is one piece of a very large puzzle of interventions at the middle and high school that will allow us to spread our students out and uncouple the middle school and high school schedule. Remember, we do some sharing, okay? But because of the ESSA three grants, what that allow us to do is, is uncouple, is, is not be uh, you know, married to each other, and they can start doing some things programmatically. In doing so, we will, the high school will gain blocks of time and this is gonna be, until I can write this out, folks, so we're gonna present this, but I'm gonna do my very best here, okay? Um, what this allows us to do is to work with students whom have failed at the high school, failed classes for the year, and allow them in areas of ELA, science, math, the core subjects, to retake those courses because they're credit bearing. And Again, we, we had some, diff every high school had difficulty with kids um, passing all their classes and these are credit bearing. So it is the music program as presented here at the Millen High School allows the space and the ability to work with students who definitely have identified gaps in learning both at the middle and high school. This is a one year pro. Uh, plan, quite frankly. Um, and because remember, these ESSA grants are not forever, as, as we are constantly reminded. Um, but they are being utilized in the, in the sense that they're supposed to be, which, of course, is to minimize um, the loss and, of course, credit recovery um, at, at the high school. So I'm going to stop there, because I've said a whole lot and, I, and I'm confused and I'm the one who, you know, just said it all, but um, it's one part, I, I do approve of this plan. 
Um, the, the finance department knows this. I spoke with them today, but what I said is that never, unless, unless Mr. Young needs more unified, uh, more electives to be able to offer more credit bearing courses, the, the, the offerings at the high school, they've got to stay this way. They've got to stay basically 0.4, 0.6. Thank you for um, addressing the the actual the, the full memo is out on our agenda for the public to see. Yep. And I actually appreciate the fact that you've taken this proposal and kind of talked through um, what it really means and, and how we can address uh, the concerns of the fine arts department, um, as well as the academic gaps that, that we see. So um, does anybody have any questions at this point on this information from Dr. Kazavant? I don't see any, and I'm sure that once you're able to put everything down, because there's a lot of moving parts on this, um, you will present out to the committee, obviously, um, what the, the final plans are, especially as we go and we start looking to spend some of those ESSER funds. So, Absolutely, Madam Chair, and just, and just quickly, on the back page, you're going to see this proposal or proposals for stipended amounts. I'd like to address that next meeting uh, as the, as the um, NDEA contract um, you know, indicates that it's, it's within the purview of myself through the school committee to add um, stipended positions without using, utilizing the year kind of test. I'd like to pull this apart just a little bit and, and talk about it some more um, and for, your, uh, for your approval, ultimately in the bigger picture, which will obviously need to happen next, the next committee meeting, because uh, we plan to present the, the entirety um, of what we're doing in terms of intervention and um, the use of ESSER three and, and two and three funds. That sounds like a good plan if we, um, if there's a need for positions that we don't have um, and we'll see that immediate payback. Obviously we have that one year trial period, but we know that there is a way around that when we feel that the value um, is there. So yeah, we will put that on um, stipended positions on the next agenda um, and you can kind of present what you're looking at and whatever approvals uh, for our consideration that you want to put forward we can address then so thank you and i do want to thank the fine arts department for this proposal um, they uh, was very well thought out and i think it really put the students first as far as you know what what are those needs um, and what do our students want and what does the district overall need too so i want to just thank them um, for the thoughtful uh, process they went through to put this document together. So we'll, we will continue to review this and hear more from Dr. Kazimant, so thank you. <clears throat> um, public comment, I'm just, I just wanna read this because um, Christine Bennett just put a comment um, out there that uh, I, this had to do with the Athol Savings Bank potentially um, coming into the school to help and what she commented on, which I think is important for everyone to know, um, she would love to see that. Worker, workers Credit Union has an actual branch stand at Monty Tech. Um, and then maybe that's something that we could also start to explore with Athol Savings Bank. We do utilize Athol Savings Bank for our Save Some program at the elementary school. But often when those kids hit that last year of elementary, they stop saving because there's no outlet for them. Um, a representative normally comes to the school and the kids make deposits is a whole bunch of fun process. Um, but we don't have a conduit for that to happen. So I think it would be great if we maybe could engage them uh, to start offering and ultimately maybe some sort of branch service or something um, at, that, at the middle and high school level. So thank you, um, Ms. Bennett, for your comments. All right, okay, next up, um, I don't see any other public comments. So I'm gonna move on to the NDEA and Ms. Parker, I see you're here. So I will turn it over to you. Hello. Um, not really much to share tonight, just everybody's, you know, everybody's back in full time for the most part. Um, and I do believe that our, there are more kids who are remote that are choosing to come back now, which is, which is a great sign. It means that, you know, some of the, the fears are lifted a little bit in the families and um, more and more people are getting vaccinated. Um, I know a lot of um, families are fully vaccinated if, they're, if their kids are 16 and older. Um, and it just right now everybody's just moving forward and came off April vacation and getting ready for MCAS because that's coming up pretty soon too. Um, but the kids are doing great. 
I know in the elementary school, the kids are, the kids are really doing great being back in school. And again, I'm just so amazed at how good they are wearing their masks. And, you know, if they see someone take it off by mistake, they'll, they remind each other, put them back on. Um, lunches seem to be going well and mm. just seems like the, the year is going well, considering everything that we've gone through. I think, you know, people are really putting it together well. Great, thank you. And once again, you know, I send uh, the, my thanks, my personal thanks, and I'm sure I can speak for the, on the committee's, committee's behalf as well to, to thank everybody in the district top down, um, but especially the ones that are right in front of our students and making that difference for them. You hear so many horror stories about uh, the number of beds needed for mental health issues. Um, and that's so related to these kids not being in front of the teachers and being there for them. So um, it just, it, it, it's, a, it's good to hear that it's going well. Um, I know the people that I've spoken to, and I'm sure if I ask the rest of the committee, that anyone who has kids, they're very, one, happy the kids are back in school full time, but the kids themselves are really thrilled. I know my son was happy to actually see his friends and not just communicate via his Xbox headset. Um, so it was, that's definitely good. So please, uh, you know, again, continue to send along our, um, our thanks and, uh, you know, and, and keep up the great work. It's been hard. It's been um, a lot of work and tiring, but I think this, the end of the year is coming soon. So um, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. So thank you, Lisa. Anyone else have any questions or comments for Ms. Parker? I don't see any. I do just want to also mention that in the chat, Jen Smith um, also said that she loves these financial literacy ideas. So there is uh, from the community um, parents who have kids that um, love them as well. So I just want to share her comment. So, okay. Um, next up, we'll do a, a quick budget update. Um, I'm going to just gloss right over FY21 because there's, from a legislative per perspective, there's been no, no moves or, or changes on that. Um, I think we'll get a, a better update from Ms. Geister at next meeting um, when we get our, our business manager reports and we can talk more about that. Um, FY22 budget, the House did pass their budget. The Senate, uh, is supposed, the Senate leaders are supposed to present their budget next Tuesday on May 11th. Uh, amendments are going to be due and then they'll be voted on starting the week of May 24th. Sorry, my animals are fighting. Um, so we'll have some movement in the, in the, um, in the Senate. Um, once it comes out of the Senate and they address the amendments, the next step is a joint conference committee um, where the Senate and the House come together and then they go towards um, uh, the the governor and he does his veto. So we're hoping that maybe by July 1st, we'll have a budget unlike last year, um, but fingers crossed. And I don't know if Dr. Kazavant, um, you've got anything to add to that? No, we're just waiting. Um, obviously the um, Mars group keeps us updated um, as to some of the issues that would affect regionals. But um, as you said, uh, Madam Chair, it's just a matter of waiting game to see how it all flushes out especially through the, in the joint committee or as it comes out of the Senate. Okay. Um, I'm gonna switch a few things around. Um, we, this, is, this is a rough day for many of us having gotten some, some COVID shots and things and some of us are fading. So um, I, I do have, I'm gonna move up. Um, is Mr. Mark still, there he is. I'm gonna move um, Mr. Marks up a subcommittee report out for the diversity, equity and inclusion um, group. Um, we had asked him a couple of meetings ago to give us an update on specifically the, the mascot, the logo, and whatnot, and um, he had agreed to do the update. Unfortunately, um, we did not have a lot of time at the last meeting, so I want to get him on uh, the stage because I think you've got some important information to share out with the community because this is very important work. So, Jeff, I'm going to turn it over to you at this point. All right. Thank you, Margaret. And I'll just give a uh a brief update on everything that we've been working on uh, this far, so, okay? Um, so as the committee is aware, the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Subcommittee have been working with two excellent student leaders this year, Maddie Ambrosi and Nadia Surin. Uh, these students have brought some great ideas and expanded the discussion of the group. However, next fall, these two student leaders will be entering their senior year, and the subcommittee agrees that having them involved in discussions has worked out great. 
with that said, the subcompany has reached out to Mr. Young in hopes of including several additional underclassmen to, to participate um, in the group beginning next academic year, and therefore they could take over for Maddie and Nadia upon graduation. Um, so um, we're hoping, it, I've talked to Mr. Young and we should be able to uh, get that going. He's, he's getting some names. Um, so our discussions in the subcommittee have surrounded uh, some of the challenges our students are facing, identifying the needs uh, in areas of concerns of our students, as well as the discussions on the topics of what changes would be most effective for the district. Uh, unfortunately, due to uh, remote learning and the limited interactions that our students have had with each other, it's hindered some of the work that, um, that we've been looking to do this year. Um, so, but we are, we're working on it. That, that go? Okay. Um, so also a considerable amount of our resources uh, have been focused around reimagining our district's mascot. By the way, did, uh, am I sharing screen by any chance? Okay, all right, okay. Uh, uh, the mascot. I had hoped to have some additional logo um, uh, for tonight's meeting. Uh, however, due to final exams coupled with his already hectic work scuttle, uh, schedule, our graphic designer was unable to provide me with the additional concepts. So the concept that you do see on screen, I just wanna let you know, it's not final, it's not nothing. It's just one of the concepts uh, that we've been working on. It's actually what he presented in his uh, final exam or in his final project. So I just kind of wanted to give the group an idea of what we're looking at, okay? Um, um, so the committee would like to express their support for changing the district's Native American imagery, uh, but retaining the name. We feel that the Warrior Nation doesn't necessarily depict any particular group. The imagery is the district's main concern. We do not want our imagery or our mascot to negatively affect uh, or ne negatively characterize any race of people, okay? We believe Warrior Nation, linked with a new unbiased image, is something the entire district can be proud of. Uh, the Warrior name is a symbol of everything our district stands for, strength, courage, respect, uh, and pride. We have talked about how warriors work together as a team, supporting and protecting each other, conducting themselves with honor, meeting um, any competition or challenge with strong determination. We feel these are great values which pay tribute to our school spirit, and this is why we are compelled to preserve the warrior name. Um, I feel it's also important to inform the committee that there is currently a bill filed in the state Senate. It's Bill SD 417, and it's uh, that schools not use Native American imagery, words, and symbols as athletic logos. The bill defines a Native American mascot as a name, a symbol, or an image that depicts or refers to an American Indian tribe, individual, custom, or tradition that is used by public schools as a mascot, um, name, or a logo, a letterhead, or anything such as that. Um, although this bill is still under review, the, community, the committee feels that removing the district's current Native American image while retaining the warrior name should satisfy this proposal uh, this proposed legislation, if it is ever passed. Um, those are really the big things that I have um, on there. Um, I actually will ask for a motion at some point, but I thought that um, maybe we should have some discussion and just reach out and see if there are any questions or anything that um, uh, the committee may have. Great, thank you, Jeff. I don't know if you wanna stop sharing your screen just so we can see everybody. I can certainly do that. Just make it a little easier for discussion. Uh, all right, maybe I can't do that. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. Thank uh, you. Okay. Um, I'll throw it out to the committee. I mean, thoughts, um, comments, concerns. We have this has been an ongoing discussion in this committee, which is one of the reasons we formed our DEI subcommittee to begin with, because this was something that we wanted to be able to address. Um, the committee has not done any formal motion because the subcommittee did ask for some time to come up with what a, a pathway <clears throat> that they would like to take. Um, so I'll ask if there's any questions or comments from any of the other committee members at this point. I don't see any. So I know that we've talked in the past um, about the subcommittee proposing a motion to the full committee um, to act on. So if you, if the subcommittee wants to present that to the full committee tonight, we are certain will, will, certainly willing to entertain your motion if you would like to make it. 
Okay, um, I'd like to make a motion that the committee eliminates all Native American imagery from the district logos, but preserves the warrior name. Okay, so that is a, again, a motion to eliminate the Native American imagery, but to preserve the warrior name. Um, with that motion on the floor, do I have um, someone who would like to, uh, well, Mrs. Robichaud made the motion. Um, so do I have a second for that motion? Second. And I have a second from Mrs. Kozel. Is there any other um, comments, questions, <coughs> excuse me, from the committee? Um, I don't see anyone. I, I just have um, a couple of comments. Um, and, and again, they're kind of leading. Um, I know that this, this sets the, the stage for making changes. And I know that as a district, um, it's no, no, you know, no, no secret that, you know, financially we're struggling um, because of COVID and other things. Um, so that any, any look to change the logo, obviously there will most likely be a cost to that. And I'm sure that the subcommittee um, will continue to work on that plan <laughs> on how to roll that out. Um, so I can speak a little bit to that. We have actually talked about that, Margaret. Um, a lot of in, in you know, for uh, a lot of the, we'll, we'll call them big ticket items. What we're, what we're talking about doing, such as the gym floor, I think would be a great example. Maybe some of the podiums. Um, what we're thinking we would do um, once we get all this is we would roll those out um, um, over a long term as things um, as things needed to be replaced. Like as the gym floor needed to be refinished, we would roll that out. And then uh, we've actually had discussions on whether we would actually put any logo back into the floor or maybe we should do banners or something like that. Um, as far as uniforms and things like that, um, same thing at the end of their uh, life cycle you know what i mean we would just redo them um other smaller ticket items uh the website things like that we would think that we could do that uh more immediately um however you know as the committee is aware is um in an effort to save some of the costs uh we've been working with the the student uh, graphic designer okay um, so it, it's been a little bit slower. He's actually been great, but we are still working with uh, with that. So, I mean, once we have the designs, and again, once we have designs, we will be bringing um, several concepts back to the committee for a, for a vote on those as well. Um, but once we have those ones, um, then we can start um, changing the uh, things throughout the district, State, changing the logos throughout the district. Does that, does that answer your question, Margaret? Yes, that that addressed that. And the other part of the question um, is, you know, how I, I love the fact that we have students involved. Yes. Um, so I'm assuming that we'll continue to engage the students, the district community, um, and the community at large when we, we come to decide what we want to change. Um, and I'm sure that you'll be working on a plan to how we would do that effectively. Um, so I'm um, again, kind of a leading more of a statement than a question. Um, yeah. So, um, but I assume that's part of the plan then. It is part of the plan. And, and just so the committees that where we have had some uh, community members that have came and spoke uh, with the committee. Um, so it's actually been a good thing. The students, as a matter of fact, the logo that was up there earlier or the concept that was up there earlier, that was actually uh, brought to what it was really, um, um, an inspiration of one of the uh, one of the students on the committee. So uh, we, we're very proud of that. So uh, we are, we have had um, discussions um, around the surrounding the um, community involvement in things like that. Um, so we will we'll work something uh, additional back to the committee, uh, Margaret. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else have any other questions, comments? Uh, Mrs. Matson. Yeah, I um a couple of things actually so our name uh narragansett has to do with the narragansett indians if i'm not mistaken was there any discussion in um possibly changing the name of the district um and also was there any discussion in possibly um, changing, um, it going with a different mascot instead of a warrior. 
Uh, yes, yes, to, yes to both of your questions. Absolutely. Um, there was, there was, as a matter of fact, there was a lot of discussion uh, surrounding uh, the Narragansett um, name. Okay, um, and I think one of the bigger concerns. And okay, so so uh, around the name, and there was a discussion surrounding the warrior name. Uh, one of the one of the reasons is we also um, our discussions brought us to. Uh, his, history, you know, why we've had this name, uh, the school spirit, the existing school spirit. Um, um, and we didn't want to take away from all of that. So we've tried to come up with a balance between everything. Um, there was, I will say, there was a lot of discussion um, surrounding actually the Narragansett and the warrior together, you know what I mean? Which, you know, it could be, could be problematic. Um, but we feel that uh, we did, uh, we came to the determination that we feel that um, the warrior ne name is, you know, can be other than uh, a Native American. So, um, so we're, we're comfortable that um, with the decision that we've made, Laurie. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have any other questions or comments? Cause we do have an active motion on the floor. Okay, seeing none, then we will do a roll call vote. And again, the motion was to remove the Native American imagery, um, but retain the warrior name um, as the, uh, the, I guess the, the, I don't know what, is that the, the logo, the tagline? I don't, I don't know what you call that. You got mascot. Ma yeah, yes. Yeah, so, but retain the warrior name. Um, we will do a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Marks. Yes. Mrs. Matson. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Robichon. Yes. Mrs. Kojal. Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So that was unanimous. So we look forward to hearing more from the diversity, equity, inclusion group um, and, uh, and getting future updates on where we stand and how we're moving on this. And also for that bill, you know, where it stands in the Senate. Um, I think there's a corresponding one in the House as well. Um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, where that and, and if that passes, um, because I know our own state flag, there are issues with. Yes. Um, so there is a big push to make that change. So thank you for the update, Mr. Marks. Um, any closing remarks that you want to leave us with? Oh, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, I'm just looking at the agenda, trying to see if there is anything we can um, push off. Dr. Kazavant, we did have a COVID-19 update. I know we've spoken to it most everything. Is there anything in particular that you wanted to discuss at this point that can't be pushed off till the next meeting? I would just say that the Midland High School did a fantastic job opening just like the elementary did. Um, um, again, credit to all the teachers who just make it and, and the administrators who just make it look easy. I, I would just say that it, it's not easy, trust me, but they do. They make it look easy and um, but I think at this point, I think that's, that's good for now and we, I'll update as, as, as needed. Great. Thank you. Um, school committee comments. Um, anybody have any comments they'd like to make before I have one? <laughs> Surprise there. <clears throat> I just wanted to make a comment and thank um, Ray Antrifolo and Deb Kojal and Vicki Chartier for their service to the committee for the past many years. Um, they, the three of them have decided not to run for their seats. Um, so we will have a turnover in some of the committee members at our next meeting, but I didn't want them to not be recognized for the service and the input and the insight that they have added to the committee and the impact they've made on the district as a whole. So I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, you will be missed. We hope that you will, you know, come and, and you know, Mrs. Kojal, if you've got a policy, you know, that you want to come <laughs> and talk for to. For sure, for sure. <laughs> um, we never finished the silly book. Uh, we were close. We are so close. Close. <laughs> so, but thank you so much. Um, I know that when I started on the committee, um, the three of you were all mentors to me in one way or another. So I want to thank you again for your service. So um, thank you. you're very welcome. It was my pleasure. Me, I'm very proud of our district. Yeah, I, we all are. It's, it's, it, it speaks um, very well to the district, how committed everyone is at every level. So, but thank you. Um, the only other comment that I wanted to make, and this is really on, on behalf of Mrs. Trifolo, a comment that she had passed to me the other day, is just a shout out to our nurses. 
Yes. Um, they are going above and beyond. Um, and I just, you know, we always thank everybody. Um, and, you know, I want to single them out though and make sure that they understand that their work has not gone unseen uh, between contact tracing um, on top of now the kids are back. And the, you know, the, I remember the numbers when we looked at how many student visits that at the elementary school they used to get and now throw on all of this other stuff. Um, they just really, you know, extend our appreciation and make sure that they, they know that they're seen um, and appreciated um, during this time. Madam Chair, if I may, um, it, it honestly can't be stated enough. Um, quite frankly, what we've learned is that we're going to, as part of what I want to discuss about moving forward, um, we're going to have to address some of the, the needs in that area in terms of nursing. At no point did anyone think that this would be this much um, case tracing. They just case traced uh, two possibles. It was 47, you know, case traces, right? So, and that's, and actually that, that's kind of a run of the mill. So um, honestly, they, no one could work harder uh, than them right now. Um, they're going to hang in there. Um, that's what I'm told. I'm just, we're just, we're just keeping them going, but certainly a point, a, a, a point of serious discussion you know, at our next um, at our next school committee meeting, as I kind of unfold what we look like next year, uh, ESSER, et cetera. Excellent, thank you. <clears throat> look forward to that discussion. Um, I'm gonna push through a couple of these items um, so that maybe we can wrap up a little early since we're down to five of us <clears throat> and, um, and we need the quorum to be able to vote. So <clears throat> we had the bullying and intervention and prevention plan. And I'll speak for Dr. Kazavant so he doesn't have to mute again. This is, it's like a two year plan. This is, we're one year in. There are no updates as of today to the plan, um, but it has been reviewed. <clears throat> so that was just here as a, as a placeholder to make sure that we address that and we are in good shape. Um, it'll be looked at with the, um, the student handbook as well. So we'll deal with any changes at that point. Um, we had on, <clears throat> on our agenda to do a strategic plan update and discuss our superintendent evaluation. If nobody has any um, any argument about it, I would almost I'd ask that we could push this off um, because I just don't see the engagement that we need. And this might be since we'll have some new members at our next meeting a really good introduction for them with the strategic plan and understanding that. So is is, is that okay with the committee if we push those off? I'm seeing a lot of shaking heads, so I will say that is yes. <coughs> I'll email out some information on the superintendent evaluation because that works hand in hand with the strategic plan update. Um, and we'll, we'll get that for the next meeting. Um, Mrs. Barney, can we hold off on the surplus vote until next, we'll, we'll hold that till the next one. Absolutely. Um, great. Um, Mrs. Kojal, we were gonna push a bunch of policies for first reading. Um, can we do that maybe at the, the next meeting or you know in the, in the fall? I don't think there was anything major that needed to be addressed. Yeah, it's just wording and stuff. So I think that would be fine. There's, there are 22 of them. So that would be take a little time. Okay. Um, so we'll pass over that until either the next meeting or the one after. Um, the uh, subcommittee reports is really have all been done updates and we'll deeper dive next time if need be. <clears throat> the only other thing that I wanted to bring up before I turn it over to Dr. Kazimit for any other information that he wants to present to the committee, um, our next meeting is scheduled for May 19th, that's Wednesday. Um, we will have uh, three new members, hopefully, uh, as part of our committee. Normally we meet at five. I do know that five o'clock is a difficult time for some people. So I would ask the committee that we move this meeting to 530. Um, so hopefully all of our new members will be able to join us and then we can talk about ongoing um, what the time frame should be that we can meet. So um, if that works, we will do our next meeting Wednesday, May 19th at 5.30 p.m. We will more than likely do this remote again. We're close to having us in person and being televised um, or live streamed, if you will. Um, still just finalizing that. So I'm thinking this one will be remote as well. And then hopefully in June, we can get back to, to us being together. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Kazavant for his superintendent report and anything else that he'd like to report out to the committee that uh, for tonight. Um, uh, actually, Madam Chair, um, just given the enormity of, of things, um, it probably would be best 
there's nothing pressing. There's nothing um, that um, that would need attention at this moment, seeing that it'll be a week or so, right? That we'll meet again. So um, with your permission, I'd like to push off my report um, until next week, next time we meet. That's great, thank you, thank you. Um, other than that, um, we had an executive session on the books in case we needed it. I'll look to Dr. Kazavant. Um, is there any reason that we need to go into executive session tonight that can't wait? We do not at this point in time. Okay, so we, um, we do not need our executive session, so we will pass over that. And with that being said, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion by Mrs. Kojal, her, her last motion. My last motion. <laughs> and do I have a second? Second. I think, uh, I think Mrs. Matson was in first. Um, so no discussion on this one. We will do roll call, Mr. Marks. Yes. Mrs. Matson. Yes. Mrs. Robichaud. Yes. Mrs. Kojal. Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So I do wanna thank everyone. Um, for hanging in there with us and, uh, and joining us. We had some people watching the, the, the live stream. I want to thank them for watching us. Um, and again, at our next meeting, we shall have some new faces on the screen. Um, we'll be in touch, I guess, after the election and we get notification of who those people will be to, uh, to get set up emails and other, any, anything else. And I'm only saying that because I noticed a couple of names on our people watching, um, but we'll reach out to you and make sure that uh, you have the information you need. And uh, again, just thank you uh, to Mrs. Trifolo, Mrs. Chartier, and to you, Mrs. Kojal, again. And thank you. This is your last meeting. So you're uh, welcome. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.